Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name of course is Resonant and welcome to a bit of a follow up video from a previous one that I made. Now you may remember quite some time ago I made a controversial video called Could Bannerlord Exposure Be a Bad Thing? Now this stirred up a bit of a conversation and uh, there was a lot of supportive comments, a lot of understanding comments, but there was a lot of disagreeing comments as well. Now you may be wondering, why am I doing a follow-up on this? And I don't, I wouldn't normally do this, but this is the kind of thing that needs a follow-up, I think. Since there's been a lot more information coming out on Bannerlord, and I think it's time for me to right my wrongs and uh, fix the things that I said. Uh, I won't go back on the things that I said because I, at the time, I strictly believe that those were my beliefs that some stuff could be and have negative effects on the community and things like that. If you want to go and check that video out, there'll be a link down below. And, um, but yeah, I'm, I want to go back and I want to see what new information do we have from Tail Worlds that counter counteracts my predictions or contradicts what I said. So, uh, let's get back into it. Let's see what I was wrong with in my Could Bannerlord Be a Bad Thing video. So, one of the points that I made was a wider audience could negatively affect the community. It could rip apart the small community we have now in Mountain Blade, and obviously it's not perfect, but it's still a community, and I said that a wider audience could kind of dilute that community and maybe make it into something worse, if that was the worst case scenario. But from what we've seen so far, I think it's going to be the complete opposite of that. Yes, there's going to be a much wider audience coming into the game. We're going to have a lot more people coming from a lot more different places. Of course, Mountain Blade Warband has recently been released on console. So there's a there's a lot of console players that are like, should we get Bannerlord now? Because they've been new into this franchise and they might even get a PC to get Bannerlord. And we still have no idea yet, but they have mentioned that later on down the line, a long, long time after the release of it on PC, they may think about doing it on console as well, which would, of course, bring in a bigger audience. But like I said, there's been a lot of coverage at E3, a PC gamer and all that kind of things. And a lot more people have been noticed into this franchise. There was many people that didn't even know about it just because Warband was such a small indie game, but it has grown over time. So I did say that this could have bad effects on it, it could dilute the community we have. But now thinking about it and looking at the new updates we've had on the game and how it's going, I, I kind of attract that. I think a wider audience is going to be a great thing. First of all, it's going to grow money for Tailwords. Of course, you need a lot of money to make games, they're not cheap things to make. You need talent, you need members, and you need money. And all those things really are kind of revolving around how much profit Tailwords make because they can't they can't have talented people without money they can't keep their team without money and of course they can't do all the texturing or the designing or the engine making or the software stuff and all the hardware stuff that they need without money and making such a wider audience for Tailwords is going to bring in a lot more money for them and I'm really happy about that and you may think but money money corrupts people I'll get onto that later in the, another point that I made but this means they have more resources, and also a wider community and a wider audience means we can have bigger events. This is good for the players as well. Obviously, we have the Napoleonic Wars line battles. We have the Fall of Mordor shield battles, if you can see them on my channel, and the scenario events on Helm's Deep and stuff like that. But if we have more people in here, we're going to have a massive events. We're going to have a lot more clans. We're going to have a lot more regiments, and it's going to be really exciting. And because of a wider audience, there's going to be a lot more opinions, and some of those opinions may be quite controversial and bad, but everyone needs to have their opinion. And if Tail Worlds have a wider range of opinions to choose from, they can choose precisely the best updates and DLC that they can make for this community to keep them interested. And linking into the kind of wider audience thing, I made it as a separate point in the last video, but I don't really have too much to say about it right now. So I'm going to link it in with the wider audience. I did say that smaller channels like mine could be drowned out by the influx of people and large YouTubers making videos on my, on my ba Bannerlord. What's stopping them from watching the big YouTubers and just drowning out the s uh, smaller YouTubers? And I'm, I'm happy to say I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, a lot more people have come to my channel and come to my friend's channel because of Bannerlord. And 
it makes me very happy to see that it's growing the community. Uh, we have this community going at the moment that is leading up to Bannerlord and it's going to make the release absolutely amazing. We're going to be able to make clans in Bannerlord from this existing community and more people are going to come in from the release and I'm really happy to see that. So I think smaller channels are only going to grow, not be drowned out by the growing popularity of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Now something I did talk about in the previous video was accessibility. Like I said, Mount and Blade Warband runs on pretty much any machine. I have friends with single core processors that can run it on their laptops. Yes, maybe not high FPSs and maybe at the lower settings, but they can run it. And Mount and Blade Warband is the kind of game that the settings you use doesn't really affect how good you are or the amount of fun you have in the game. There isn't a massive jump between the low and high end graphics to be fair. So I think accessibility is a massive importance to Mount and Blade series and that's the reason I think so many people are still playing it. So we wanted a very accessible game that came with Mount and Blade Bannerlord. We wanted many people to play it even on low end systems and I'm happy to say I think that is the thing that is coming. Now because it is a game that's going to be coming out probably 2017, maybe later 2017. You can't play it on these low-end single-core processors anymore. That's just any mainstream game in 2016 or 2017. That's not the fault of Bannerlord. They have to have some limitations to what you can do because obviously there's going to be improved graphics, there's improved engines, improved physics and mechanics. So you're going to have to have a higher-end system than the minimum requirements for Warband was, of course, because it's a lot more recent game. But I was surprised how low-end the specs are. The minimum, as we've seen on the store page, for Mount and Blade Bannerlord being released on the store, obviously you can't buy it yet and there isn't a release date, but it is on the store to view. The processor for the minimum is an Intel i3-2100, which obviously isn't a massively advanced processor. Um, and the AMD FX6300, which is a pretty old processor now, I think you can pick it up for 70-80 quid, which is very cheap for a processor. So, if you guys are looking to get a PC that's able to play Bannerlord, you're not going to have to spend that much. You need 4 gigabytes of RAM, that's very easy to come by. Most laptops that you buy now, most PCs now that you buy, that's pretty much got 8 gigabytes most of the time. Graphics, you need Intel HD 4600, which is integrated graphics, so you could play it on a laptop if it has pretty okay integrated graphics, or maybe an i5, or maybe even just an i3. NVIDIA GT730 and the AMD R7 240 and I was so shocked by this. The R7 240 is such a low end card. Right, you can pick up an AMD R7 240 new for £60. That's about $80. That is insanely good price for a Mountain Blade Bannerlord PC and a GT730 for like 70 quid. That is absolutely insane and obviously the storage is going to be a bit more because it's a modern game so you need 40 gigabytes of available space but pretty much any hard drive can handle that you get like a 40 quid one terabyte hard drive and you are set now obviously these may change during the final release but that's what we have so far and looking at it you could pretty much build a pc for 350 400 quid that can run bannerlord that is absolutely insane not many Actually, I don't think any new massive games that we have coming out soon can even come close to that. So I am so happy to announce to you guys that the accessibility of Bannerlord is going to be spot on. And I am so happy, thank you Tailwords, for making a game that is so optimised that I have so much respect for you. How you can get that much graphical fidelity, that many troops on the battlefield, that, that, that engine that you use which is absolutely insane. And make it run on low-end systems like this. I'm so excited to see. I might have to um, just see how well it runs on that recommended system there. I will try and find out a way I can do that when it comes out. But let's move on to the final point. But yeah. So I'm very happy to say that accessibility for Mountain Blade Battlelord is not going to be an issue. Now, one of the final points I made was how is this going to affect Tail Worlds? How is a bigger audience coming in going to affect the way that Tail Worlds work? I mean, like I said before, money can corrupt people, which we have seen with a lot of companies such as EA. But I don't think this is going to be a problem with Tail Worlds. What we've seen so far is a game that you know is Mountain Blade. This is true to the Mountain Blade franchise. 
yes, they have added in amazing things. They have added in amazing graphics, amazing new mechanics, customizable things, and weapon crafting, and all that amazing stuff has been added in. But this is still Mountain Blade. They are sticking to their roots. They have made extremely good business decisions to make amazing additions that the Mountain Blade Warband community lo will love, and also that new people coming in will love as well. And there's a lot of people complaining that it's taking ages to come out, but honestly, I don't have any problem with it. I'm, I'm a patient person, and I don't really have a problem with waiting, as long as it's not obviously four or five years from now. As long as it's in the next year or two, I'm completely happy. It's a bit longer than we thought, but I don't have a problem with it. They aren't letting this wider community, or even this small community here that are saying, we need the game now, bring it out now, bring it out for us. They aren't letting that rush them. And I think if they did that, we'd have a game that we weren't completely happy with. They aren't letting this community pressure them into releasing an unfinished and early game. So I'm really happy they're doing that. They are completing their project to the standard that they want it. And I'm so happy that they're not going to rush it for a few impatient people because all, all in all, it's going to make an absolutely amazing game in my opinion. So I am very happy with Tower Wars at the moment, they are doing a great job on the game and I offer them as much support as possible and I suggest you guys go and support them as well. Whatever it may be, go and look at their YouTube channel, watch their videos, subscribe to them, follow them on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to do, just send them as much support as possible because I am very happy with how this game is coming on at the moment. But other than that guys, that is pretty much it for this video. That was a bit of a follow up for could Bannerlord be a bad thing video and I'm happy to say most of those points were eradicated from this video. So if you guys enjoyed it remember to leave a like. But comment down below, what do you think, do you have any more worries about Bannerlord or are there any things that you have been told which have relieved you a bit about Bannerlord? Well, you, did you have some worries that you don't have any more from the new updates that we have? But other than that, say subscribe to the channel for more content on Mountain Blade Bannerlord, Warband and all that good stuff. But until then, I will see you in the next one.